Hi there, this is Paula J from Secure Speaking. Today we're going to open the Chamber of Secrets. Curious? In today's episode of Hugs, I will tell you how to get to data from the user's personal account. For example, if someone doesn't work with you anymore and you want to discover that person's secrets, so things like passwords, things like encrypted data and so on, if you want to get access to it all, it's not a problem at all. So let's dig in. In this video blog, you'll become familiar with data protection API tools. And I'm going to show you the most important tools that allow you to perform recovery of user secrets. So at the very first moment, we're going to start actually with a public tool called Chrome Pass. This is not our tool. This is a tool that you are able to download from Nearsoft. But the only reason we are using this tool is because it quickly shows you the password that is stored by the user in Google Chrome. So nice thing over here is that we are able to see the username and password. And we're going to think about the situation while when this user is no longer working here and we don't know the password or user even has been deleted or whatsoever, but you still have access to user's computer and you would like to get access to user's secrets, question is, of course, under what conditions you are able to do that. First of all, in order to see where actually this particular Google Chrome password is stored, I need to use a tool and that's our tool. So let me move to the folder. Uh, that is called CQ DP API blob searcher. Also one of my favorite tools actually because it allows you to list all these places where you might potentially be storing secrets or not only you, but it could be, for example, um, application doing this. So if you go to the CQ DP API blob searcher, then within the parameters, you're able to see that we've got a bunch of options like minus F to specify the file to be searched for secrets, data protection API secrets, which have specific format, minus D, and we're going to use this for directory, and minus R to search recursively, for example, with minus O option for the output. So what we're going to do, CQDP API blob searcher, and over here we're going to specify slash D or minus D, whatever works, uh, all of the options are working here, and we're going to specify here a C users, and then we've got our user Freddy Krueger update and Google actually stores this information in local. We don't need to know that, but I would like to shorten the path a little bit because it's going to be a, like just a quicker search. And then we're going to specify here Google and then we've got Chrome search recursively with the output C, uh, let's say CQ tools like this uh, CQ tools folder. Great. And we're going to specify here. Uh, the stream to dp.txt. Why not? So after approximately 20 seconds, we'll be able to see different paths. So that was pretty quick. Uh, where Google particularly stores secrets. So one of these places it's uh, in here. See users Freddy Krueger update the local Google Chrome user data default cookies. Now, what is this information about? Well, here you are able to see master key GUID and master keys are used in data protection API as keys that are directly or indirectly protecting Google Chrome's or any other apps or Windows based um, secrets. Um, so, so this is basically the master key that we are able to use uh, to decrypt our secret or encrypt decrypt. So here you've got um, the algorithms that are used and that is um, basically for Google Chrome. So the next step will be to uh, pinpoint where this particular B55 master key is. So where is it? Well, we're going to find it in Updata and Roaming and then we're going to go to Microsoft and then we've got Protect, SID, and here we find B55 so uh, that we are able eventually to uh, spot that particular master key. So that's the guy we're going to be working with. Now, the whole operation that I would like to show you that is related with recovery is related actually with getting access to user secrets. And that will be possible if basically we've got access to user's password hash, so the MD4, or it will be possible if we have access to the very, very specific key that is stored in Active Directory that contains the private key that allows us to decrypt 
every single user in a domain secret. And that is something that our team has discovered. Uh, we are, as far as we know, the first ones in the world to, to do it. And we have fully reverse engineered data protection API to bring you these tools. So if you guys have any questions about that, let us know because uh, potentially we might know it. <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna do now? Because I would like to show you that we have a situation where we have no access to user secrets, okay? So let's cause this situation here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna override cache logon data. Sometimes we call it cache credentials, but these are not really credentials. So let's do troubleshoot command prompt. And then over here, let's go to the D drive, CQ tools, and we've got over here, um, Kiwi secure edition, and we're gonna use known by you, I guess, Mimi cards, but that's the secure edition, which allows us to override cache logon data. And we're gonna do LSA dump and cache. And then we're gonna do Windows system32 config. And then we're gonna do system and D Windows system32 config security slash Kiwi. Okay, great. So why these two? Because these two are registry databases. One system because it contains the boot key, security because it contains cache logon data, and we are overriding cache logon data. Now, uh, before we do it, one more step, because we're going to be logging on with that user. So we cannot be connected to the domain simply because at that stage, we've got uh, we got to log on with the cache logon data. And when we do Kiwi, fantastic, then we have actually overwritten cache logon data. So we can right now go to continue and we will be able to log on as Freddy Krueger domain user, but with that specific, very specific password that we have actually configured right now by using this tool. So long story short, that is a pretty nice setup allowing us to see under what conditions we are able to get access to uh, Freddy Krueger's secrets. So let's try to log on as this particular user with the old password that we had, and that's password password, to the domain, enter, and that doesn't work. Here, we're gonna use Mimikatz because we have overwritten cache logon data in the registry. And uh, let's try to use Mimikatz in order to log on to that box. So uh, the login process is happening right now. And um, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to verify if we actually have access to that um, credentials that were used in, in, by Google Chrome and stored for LinkedIn. And as you see, that takes time because with the current password hash, we're not able because with the current pa because with the current password hash, we're not able actually to see um, the password that is actually user secret. Yes, because we are relying on it. So let's repeat and summarize. Uh, we've got over here the situation where we are not able to read the password because we are actually um, logged on with the certain username and the password that does not allow us to get access to the master key. Now, there is a backup way to access the master key, and that's what we're going to talk about. Let's switch to the domain controller. And within the domain controller, that's going to be a very short uh, thing to do because we're going to get to tools and then we're going to get into the toolkit uh, that we got for the data protection API. And we're going to use over here CQ Elsa secrets damper. And then on the top of that, we're going to do file, exported, PFX, and in this exported PFX, we've got basically the private key, super secret private key that should never uh, leave organization to decrypt everybody's secrets, everybody's passwords, and so on. Now, the problem with this particular key is that it cannot be renewed, it cannot be changed, and so on. So if we have a look at the... Uh, exported PFX. We don't need to import it, but let me actually show you. The password is secure. Let's go next. Next and finish. And if we go OK, then we are able to see that in a moment. Um, 
so we've got cert mgr msc and over here if we go to personal certificates we're able to see that there is a certificate that is a little bit dodgy because it's issued to nobody and issued by nobody and eventually uh, that's the certificate that we need to use in order to get access to our secrets on the user computer so i've taken this exported pfx to the windows 10 box and that's this box over here so let me make it a full screen and this particular certificate we're going to be using on the top of this b55 master key in order to uh, extract that particular password in the google chrome let me show you so if you go once again to update we're going to go to microsoft protect sid and then we go b55 and that's this one and then i'm going to do shift right click copy as path that's this one and then we're going to be using this guy to first decrypt it with the private key from the domain and then we're going to re-encrypt it with our current passwords hash so mimikatz hash <laughs> that's our password yeah so here uh, we're going to start console as a regular user yep and um let's go to the tools fantastic and over here we're gonna first generate the hash of the current password and that's this one and then we're gonna use the final tool which is called cq master key ad to use it first of all with the certain file and we're gonna use over here that particular master key that's b55 that we're gonna work on and then what we're gonna do first of all we're gonna specify over here pfx and that's our exported pfx and then new hash which will be this md4 that we got and let me paste it fantastic so we've got all the necessary components that we got uh, to decrypt the particular master key okay let's do enter new master key successfully written to ad modified okay so if we get in here you've got a new file and by using this procedure we take the old one that we cannot get access to and then we are replacing it rename over here with this particular file yeah so we got this one but if you have a look then this file has a different icon yes because we have to give it an attribute of a system and hidden yep here we go enter and right now we can verify if it changed yes it did and over here we can refresh uh, the view for the chrome pass that's the password that wasn't there f5 for the refresh and then we got a password over here so summarizing what you've just seen it's a set of data protection api tools that are allowing us to recover every single domain user secret and under this is happening under the condition of having either a hash of the user's password or if you don't have that you can still recover anything that moves by having just this pfx file so the private key that is maintained by the domain now the problem with this private key is that it cannot be renewed it cannot be changed whatever you do it just stays the same from the moment you actually set up your domain on the main controller yes so eventually this is something that you have to protect and when it leaks when your ntds.dit is uh, stolen then there isn't much you can do because that pfx remains the same so from that moment your domain will be always compromised of course another thing over here is risk but that's not really the part of this presentation so you are able to see how forensically recover secrets of users okay guys thank you so much for watching make sure that you're gonna download the package with the tools from this episode from our blog secureacademy.com blog and in order to get more episodes more information definitely please visit our blog thanks so much for watching